man i i can't even i can't even speak i don't i don't know what to say i i've been doing these videos for quite a while now i've been talking about different countries about any match that i see but this one i don't know this one actually hurt me and you may not care and it probably won't, doesn't even matter to you but to me this one just hurt like i said before in some of my past videos that i've done about el salvador um I'm half Salvadorian from my dad's side and I've lived there. I, I love that place. Uh, I've lived like six months there. I have a lot of great memories from El Salvador, but I don't know. Watching this, it just, it just hurt. I don't know because I got this false hope or this sense of faith, this sense of hope that El Salvador was going to qualify. And the way things turned out with um, Jamaica and Curacao, Curacao, or however you say it, they tied, they tied one to one. Me and Jamaica had five points. Just one more than El Salvador. So basically, if El Salvador would have won this game, they would have been first of the group, which was, like, crazy to me, you know? I had hoped that they would be first. I had hoped that they would get there, and I thought they actually would, and especially what happened, what occurred in that that game before this one. I was like, it's going to happen. El Salvador is going to be first. They're not going to have to face USA until the next round. But man, was that wrong? And I know sometimes, like, us being fans or us being just patriots of our countries and things like that kind of blinds us of, like, the truth. And that's basically what happened here. I didn't take the, into account the things that were occurring like how El Salvador was just getting in, through in this competition with just one goal. El Salvador had no attack. And we could see it in this game. Honduras had nothing left to, left to play for. They basically lost their two matches. They lost to uh, Jamaica. <coughs> they lost to Curacao. They lost to Jamaica 3-2. to two. They lost to Curacao 1-0. And they just, they had nothing left to play for. All the momentum was with El Salvador. And man, if you would have just heard that stadium, the national anthem, everything. That whole stadium was full of Salvadorians. Not saying that it didn't have any people from Honduras or Honduras, but... That whole stadium was basically Salvadorians because by the time this whole thing ended, ended, the whole thing was like empty. There was people there, but it was just people from Honduras <laughs> and the Curacao players celebrating, like in that top balcony where they were. And I, I just got nothing left to say, you know. I thought we were gonna qualify, but man, was I wrong? And you might say we we forgot Rodolfo or Rodolfo Celaya or Fito Celaya or whatever, but it doesn't matter. The players we have, they need to be a step up. We can't always rely on one player, and especially this guy. This guy sold the country. Like, I don't know if y'all would know that or whatever. He basically got money in exchange for just lowering his performance. And I know the country's corrupt. I know things like that ha occur. And he was just looking for his well-being. But you can't just sell your country. You can't, just can't sell 
your patriotism just for some money, for some extra cash. I don't know. The situation is hard. And I can't relate because I'm here in the United States and things are way different here. You might say we, we needed Dennis Pineda. And I think that's true. What he, what I saw from him in that last Gold Cup in 2017 was just amazing. The skill he had, he was way above all the players. And you can see his quality and you, you can see why he's in Portugal. But this is what we have. And we can't just keep on relying on players that aren't here, that are in El Salvador, that are in Europe or whatever. This is what we have. And what I saw was a bunch of frauds. They gave you like this false hope that everything's going good, everything's going fine. But when the going gets tough, none of them are there. And it just, it, it kind of hurt, you know, because I believed, I was like, we got four points. We tied against Jamaica, supposedly the best team in the group. And they were, because they did get all five points. We beat Curacao, and I was like, Honduras is going to be easy because they already lost both of their games. But this is the, the sense of rivalry. El Salvador and Honduras, they go way back. They've had a war over soccer, over football. I'm not talking about just like some soccer on the field or some football on the field, like an actual all-out war. I don't really know the details. I'm not going to say say everything like I do, but they did have a war, and it did occur, and people actually did die and things like that. That was long ago. So just to come out here and just, like, lose 4-0, for me, this game means a lot more because there's blood on this game. People actually died for this, for representing El Salvador, for representing Honduras. And the Honduras, uh, Honduras represented their fallen soldiers, whatever, they represented them good because they didn't go out there and lose. They lost some other games. But the one that's important, the one about pride, the one about rivalry, the one about countries, the one about international tension, they won it with a great goal by this guy. And, like, I can't say nothing that's going to make it feel any less. Like, there's blood on this game. Sometimes for these players, they just act like it's whatever, you know? We lose. It's just it's just another international call up. It's just another tournament. But for me, like if they don't wanna be here, if they don't wanna obey, if this or that, if they give up, I don't know. I just I just can't take it. This of flopping on the ground and just looking for a foul. It's retarded to me. Why do you have to flop on the ground and look for a foul? Why can't you just get up and play? Why can't you just be a man? And just play like you're supposed to. I know flopping in soccer and whatever in football is normal. You're just normalized. And I don't know. It might just be me that feels that way. But I, I'm tired of it, you know. You're losing 2-0. You're down a goal, whatever. You're running on the wing. And they barely touch you. And you want to fall to the ground and act like somebody hit you. Somebody slapped you in the face. Somebody, like, threw their legs. They took out your legs right under you. Somebody pushed you so hard you had a fall. Like, grow some some balls, you know? You can't be this weak. Like, how are you just going to let these people just run you over like this? You had a full crowd of people. The fans, they were all rooting for you. And you let them down. Like like I said, I ain't got nothing else to say. Like I said in the USA versus Thailand game, I said quality or superiority of a team is shown 
And I said the excessive celebrations weren't a problem because I was like on the opposite end of the stick, you know? I was the one celebrating with USA. I was the one being like, oh, they're way better than Thailand, whatever. But this time, like, I'm on the other side. I'm the loser this time. I'm the one that got four scored on, whatever. But like I, like I said before, I and mean, I stand by my points because I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say that this doesn't matter. I'm going to applaud the performance that Honduras gave. They looked for the game. I know they didn't have as much pressure as El Salvador did to qualify. They lost their two first games, but they looked for this game. They knew about the rivalry. They knew the, about the tension. They, they didn't want to just sit down there and lose all three games, and especially to a rival. And, and props to them, you know, they they got what they wanted. Like that first goal that just broke up everything, that was that was amazing. But like I said, the Salvadorian team, it's horrible. You can't do this. Like I said, you can't just sit on the floor and just keep crying and expect the world to just give you stuff, to hand it over. I've said this many times. In this world, nothing is free. Everything you have to work hard for. And if something's free, something's wrong. And it's not worth it. Because you need to pick yourself up. You need to become a better person. I don't know if these guys were in the locker room thinking that they were already qualified because they had four points or this or whatever. And they're like, oh, we're just going to beat Honduras because they suck and they lost their two games. Well, Honduras came out here and they showed them that we don't care if we lost. We ain't losing to our rivals. And that's what they did. They could actually be happy that they did something. They lost two games, but so what? Now Everybody's going to remember this defeat. No one's going to care about our first two games and how good we started the Gold Cup. They're just going to remember this 4-0 from Honduras. Like I said, you got to pick yourself up and you got to become a better person. Nothing's going to be handed to you in life. I mean, we can't we can't just keep on going like this. I do kind of blame this man right here, Delos Goals, because some of the changes he made were just, they were horrible. Like, I know the quality that we have is pretty limited, especially in the starting 11. There's no one better than that starting 11. And putting on Ortiz didn't really do anything. This guy hadn't played one game, and he put him in this game just because we were losing. Horrible change. And the change that just ruined the whole game was taking out our defensive midfielder, Oreña, for who do you, I don't even remember who we put in. Mayen, I think. And he put us. Uh, Darwin set in as defensive midfielder and then this guy messes up and then just causes the the second goal it was horrible we needed that guy he's the anchor of the team he's the one who controls the team if we had that dude still in we probably could have just lost by one or two but these are just the, the decisions that that shapes a manager that shows the people what he's made out of when the going gets tough what does he do he just basically opens up his legs and just lets the opposition just stick it in them. Because that's what I saw. I don't know what you saw. But what I saw was this dude just basically just spreading his legs wide open. You could say this is vulgar or bad or just not a good representation, but that's what I saw. I ain't see anything in response. This guy didn't have anything in response. No tactics, no nothing. He didn't have anything, but it didn't really matter, you know? Because I felt like the result was going to be the same every single time. I know the country's corrupt, and I know we probably can't fix this soon. But a plan can be set, and the Federation just needs to find a manager to stick by. And that's just what I feel like they should do. I feel sorry for the fans. Um, some moments were hard. I know I saw that they had banners saying that 
they just made them forget that they were even far away. But this is what I stay with. Just this moment right here. This is what I, what I like. Thank you.